Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the another episode on thoughts of education. And uh, today we have with us a person who's had three decades of experience into the finance, operations, management, and HR part. And uh, he, after completing his experience in the corporate, now he's working for working at as a director at Pune Business School. Uh, by Pupri Chinchwad Education Trust. And uh, please welcome uh, Dr. Narayana. Uh, Dr. Narayana, I would like you to start with your introduction and uh, tell me about uh, how, how, how have you started uh, from corporates to the education sector. Uh, it's an interesting question. Okay. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, I have uh, transformed myself to come to academia first from the industry in the sense uh, yes uh, i finished my phd before embarking my journey into academic uh, i work for institutions like international management institute new delhi imi uh, is a very well known brand and i was also the director for ifim bangalore earlier and then i have transformed kirloskar institute of advanced management as a director general and I was also uh, the director for ACMS uh, Cochin School of Business. If you talk about the, the these brands are very well known in India and uh, from an experience of General Electric, uh, uh, Godrej, uh, Xerox, RPG Group, I have now come to academia where I'm able to actually do something for the student community because passion is my, uh, you know, is something which I drive at and I always chase my passion as teaching. And I've been doing a decent job as a professor and also as an administrator uh, at a leadership position. Just for information, I was uh, uh, rated as number four, uh, you know, B-School leadership for 2017 by National HRD and People's Matter, uh, just after I am A, B and uh, uh, maybe XLRI. So that's a kind of, uh, you know, transformation I went through before coming into education. And I was mentored by Dr. Uh, late Padmashri um, uh, Pritam Singh. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, just as in Pune is always known as Oxford of the East or Oxford of the India. Okay. So uh, what brought you to uh, Pune Business School or in particular to the PGDM course. So what can a student joining uh, this year for a PGDM course at Pune Business School expect at the end of uh, two years? Okay, let me uh, talk to you from the beginning what we're looking at from a PGDM institution. So if you look at Pune Business School in particular, you know, uh, it's a business school, it's a comprehensive business school focus uh, as on academia as well as other you know, trades which will bring them as a business manager or an entrepreneur. So a distinctive learning approach and the style with a global vision we are driving this institute. And PCET is a very well-known group and uh, you know the institution like PCCOE branded number two in Maharashtra known for their engineering. And the group has already got more than 10 years of experience in management education. And they have developed uh, an innovative and focused plan to improve the student learning environment experience and also enhance, enrich their uh, facility, uh, what is required for to become a manager. As a part of this strategic focus, PBS aims to ensure a quality and effective student support services and promote students to the level of development that they can embark their journey easily to business world. There's a lot of gap between real world problems like in India and the employer skills like the students possess. So what kind of extracurricular activities you plan to bring in so that a student when he uh, completes his PGDM, so he is uh, industry ready to go into the industry and uh, start performing over there. Okay, as an institution, you know, we believe in enhancing the overall capability of a student so it is a, a, a relationship of enhancement of their capability. So grooming the students is very, very important at all levels. Hence, we have a lot of clubs here uh, and then committees where the students really uh, take part and then they also manage these events and the student events and they run 
events on their own we don't interfere in that but we support them in terms of how to take this to the next level uh, to name some of the you know things we have pro smart club we have a professional development club we have a think rethink club and we have a research club we have a fit and find club called ffc uh, expressive club and uh, and we also have image builders club which focuses on building a personality of the overall personality of the student so the it's about communication and development of overall skills so these are the clubs which are operational uh, you know in P- uh, pbs and uh, it's going to be uh, now in terms of how they're going to look at the world as an analytic club that we are now mulling on how to bring analytics into these clubs also so the focus is very clearly to drive these things to enrichment programs adding to the same question again uh, now higher education uh, was perceived something as in uh, if you complete your higher education pgdm uh, you will be uh, going to an industry ready uh, you will be joining a company where you have the industry ready skills but uh, corona has certainly uh, put forward some challenges in terms of higher education and total education sector so how uh, yeah. is, like what are the problems that you are seeing uh, or what are the problems or challenges that you are seeing uh, from an institute level as you rightly said that this year is a very peculiar for uh, the whole of management education and education as a whole so i'm not only uh, talking about management education a few challenges uh, i perceive and then at present in higher education are you know due to covid 19 the scenario is something different students are not interested in going out of uh, you know their state pursuing their education uh, because uh, life comes first uh, naturally the diversity factor will take a huge hit in this uh, coming years at least for the next couple of years because uh, earlier pgdm institutions uh, relied on most of the people coming from outside the state uh, if i talk about maharashtra specifically almost 70% of the students of pgdm institution come from other states like np jharkhand the up uh, bihar the place so this year is going to be a big problem people who admitted also these students are facing problem in terms of really they coming online or not because another 3 4 months is going to be online so that's going to be a huge challenge and for an institution like pbs which is the first very past year probably will it's a daunting task for us but we are working very closely with social media and uh, we are hopeful that we will uh, be able to to you know uh, have enrollment which is uh, good enough to run a program and uh, pbs is uh, you know like a first semester is going to be across uh, online so we will also be having online and then with the physical room a shift will happen sometime in october november if i am not wrong and uh, addressing the challenge for us uh, we have a new institution as you rightly said although we have been in the mba industry for more than 10 years so we have that experience with us and uh, pgdm is a uh, different ball game altogether when we compare to mba uh, the reason being the terms uh, in terms of quality delivery in terms of uh, placement uh, things all the things matter a lot when it comes to pgdm institution because the roi which we, uh, the students are talking about uh, has to be higher in case of pgdm institution so that's going to be a challenge but uh, since i have come from the industry i don't think it's a big challenge because i have the kind of uh, connect and the institution uh, as a group has got that kind of uh, academia industry connect so we should be able to do well in the pgdm uh, in maharashtra the uh, challenge will also have to introduce right ratio of blended learning that's going to be a real challenge for everybody not only pbs because it's very very easy for people to say uh, it's interesting to look at an online uh, class and easy to do it but i have done recently a research which showed uh, around 16 institutes have taken across india uh, 73% of the students actually want to come back to classroom so there is something somewhere that uh, we need to develop in terms of uh, good curriculum good content and easily uh, you know understandable way of uh, uh, things that is pedagogy we call it in management education so these are the things uh, you know i look at is a blended learning is going to be a major focus and what ratio we should have the blended learning and what are the things we can shift to youtube what are the things we can shift to other uh, you know uh, online uh, things and what we need to have actually through conversation so we are mean thinking loud 
or even having a free credit course through WhatsApp. I'm thinking love and even Instagram may be used for some of the shorter videos. So that's going to be the thing and the challenges can be definitely managed well if you have that kind of uh, approach. Uh, I can't be uh, you know, running this institution on a whole time basis of classroom teaching alone. But that's going to be the thing, a mix of everything. Uh, so as you rightly mentioned right now that the uh, it should be a blended curriculum and as uh, you as an individual who's known to transform the institutions uh, over a period of time, uh, what I would like to know, so what kind of curriculum, so there are a lot of new things coming into the market. So marketing uh, as in like the marketing that used to be a decade ago or two decades ago is no longer a viable option for the new companies. So there's concepts like digital marketing. Uh, these concepts are coming in there. So how PBS Absolutely. will make sure the curriculum is intact and it is uh, like it will make sure that uh, these, it is related to the current industry challenges. Okay. Uh... Like any other business school, we do have a three program uh, specialization called uh, marketing, which is a primary thing in most of the B schools. And we have uh, HR, we have finance. Uh, these are the major things. Uh, we have very interestingly introduced, uh, you know, something on uh, startups and innovation as a major elective uh, in Pune Business School. Uh, why did we do that is also interesting. We have an integrated campus here. Uh, the PCCO is known as a brand and we have a Atel, uh, you know, incubation center. So I want to actually, uh, what's happening abroad, US, if you talk about it, they combine the techno management. So that means management education, like MBAs and PGDM guys have to work closely with engineers. When they look at a product or a patent, we involve our people for the pilot marketing, the service, and then how to do the patenting and how to launch a, pro, uh, you know, a pro product or a service. So that is where you know, we are going to be different from any other B school, at least in Pune. And then the entrepreneurship and analytics is also a focus for us uh, this year, apart from the normal marketing. Digital marketing is anyway there everywhere. So it's not that something we are going to do great thing and it's going to grow. So in digital sphere also, we have to look at certain things which can come up like in digital Instagram is not that much there. Um, then uh, in digital marketing, uh, Facebook is uh, there, but how uh, effectively LinkedIn is used. So we're going to bring in all these concepts in digital marketing as well. And then as you know, we are an AICT regulated institute and is a, you know, renowned professional uh, you know organization and then we look at the latest technology to you know involve students community uh, digital is definitely one of them and as you know we are an autonomous institution and the body empowered to design our own curriculum to upgrade this every single year so since i come from the industry i look at uh, upgrading uh, the new courses at least once in six months uh, so I would even look at if it's a trimester pattern, probably I would have looked at every trimester. So that's going to be the very clear focus. The curriculum has to be outcome-based. Outcome Listen, whatever we are doing has to result in something for a student to enable them to get a better job or start, start, start up something. So the curriculum is continuously redesigned every uh, six months, taking into consideration of the requirements of the industry. And uh, we have group of uh, board of governors comprising of uh, you know people professional yeah and the practitioners that involve get some you know, things and we will uh, continuously enhance our curriculum so the designing curriculum is done taking a detailed viewpoint the perspective of every such individual who is involved in this process including the student community with the competition being so high and so what do you guide to the student to thrive in such a high competition era uh, so how one should stand out uh, so what is your guide or what do you, what do you tell students uh, to stand out okay like uh, i i uh, pointed out earlier uh, we believe in grooming students overall uh, holistic development of a student at all levels 
Hence, uh, we do a lot of clubs and committees which work continuously on these things. Students manage and students learn and then they also gain experience. And uh, we also have regular, uh, you know, counseling with students, training and development happens there. We also hone their, uh, you know, leadership uh, skills in terms of uh, mentorship and continuous mentoring happens at all levels. So every program which we run, we have the mentor uh, mentoring program uh, for the students. And uh, we have something uh, very special called PUSH. PUSH is nothing but a performance upgradation, socially relevant holistic program. That means we are also relating uh, the things to uh, uh, society. The students are involved in mentorship, which will be focused only on society related things. And uh, that will also push their, them in terms of understanding society, how they're going to be useful. And it has to have a relevance on their uh, you know, understanding the uh, management as a course. So all these things are actually uh, going through the PUSH program. And we also have another program called Personality Enrichment Program, which we call it PEP. So PEP is, uh, you know, the faculty members uh, who, you know, normally maintain through enhancement program means I have to continuously engage my students so I have an open window policy for all the faculty members. They are available to students all the time, not only for their uh, you know professional problems, even personal things sometimes are discussed. So it's a, it's a mentoring program though. We also uh, are indirectly saying coaching is also involved, and uh, it's a good combination of well-designed uh, you know curriculum, clubs, and input support from the faculty members. And uh, certainly we are looking at preparing them as a holistic personality either to take on the challenges in the corporate world or to start on their own. Very interestingly, in the uh, existing institute of MBA uh, you know, we, we are running, uh, we created almost uh, 85 people uh, in a startup company. They're doing very well. Uh, that's uh, very encouraging for that. And in the years to come, you will see many people will be getting more into this, uh, but we are very well connected to place them well. and. Uh, in this PGDM program, uh, you know, I would be getting at least their ROI uh, recovered uh, math for two years. That's what my focus is, and PGDM institutions have to focus on that. Yes, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, in the end, I would like to ask you about uh, your opinion or your view upon the new education policy launched by the government. So, what is your take on that? It's been long since we've been waiting for this education policy, I think more than 34 years. Uh, and uh, I don't want to get into uh, any discussion on good, bad, ugly things. But what I see in this uh, new policy is, is all, all about futuristic. So this policy is, the policy is very clearly focusing on student future. For example, one of the things which are coming in UG level, most of our students uh, had a disadvantage of going with a three-year degree to US. You can't go for your higher studies. You still have to invest one more year going somewhere else, maybe Canada, or do one-year diploma, then go for uh, to US. And uh, now they are bringing the four-year UG level. And it is not only stopping at that, uh, we are also introducing some vocational courses right from the school level. So that is an interesting thing and uh, maybe you are not born. We did have an eighth board uh, uh, 40 years ago. So uh, that is really coming back. Uh, so it's a 11 year uh, program actually. Earlier SSLC used to be 11 years. Then we, we went into a pattern of 10 plus 2 plus uh, 3. Then it is a 3 year or 4 year degree. Then it was creating lots of problems for the people who actually want to pursue their studies elsewhere abroad, especially US. I think that has been addressed. Uh, and also the way we are looking at things is more on employability. So right from schooling, if you're talking about vocational courses and at a college level also, every year is counted for, uh, you know, a student. In the sense, earlier, if you're joining a three year degree course, Till you finish and get the three years degree certificate, your two years, suppose uh, you discontinue, the value of two years was zero. Am I right? That's how it is. It was. Okay. 
now for every year they are looking at giving a uh, you know uh, year wise thing if you pass a first year something second year something so every year has got a value even if you discontinue out of four years to you you still carry a value in the marketplace to get place so that is a good thing i'm talking about and it is more moving towards uh, the blended learning which i talked about in higher education so even at school level you will have uh, the online education and uh, we will have blended learning uh, uh, methods of learning and also the faculty members have to now change so this is a real challenge uh, after discussing all all about students we should also be changing uh, you know i am 55 years old now but i keep changing every single day i'm a professor of change management okay i've been i've been teaching change management at least for the past 12 years and i'm very clear that students have to change means faculty members have to change so i need to be in sync with what's happening today whether it is technology market product or services so as a leader of this institution i am driving my faculty members to get ready for the new education policy which is also in line with my thinking so it is overall if i look at this policy as of now uh, it looks pretty good but it the crux is in the implementation so how the states are going to implement and how the faculty members are going to migrate to the new system uh, including including the teachers in school and the professors uh, and the leaders uh, at my level we all have to have the process of change without any resistance with a open mind that's going to be the real challenge for the new education policy thank you for joining sir i believe uh, your thoughts will not be uh, will not only be curtailed to uh, any student who is seeking to take an admission into pune business school but also to the major students who are looking at uh, taking an admission into a pgd overall uh, it was pleasure talking to you sir uh, thank you for your time